Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp bite sized tutorial. In today's video, I'll be explaining what interfaces are and how to use them. I've covered this topic on the channel in the past before, but I thought I'd give a more beginner approach to it today. And if you guys want any more detail after this, feel free to ask down below. And if enough people want help with it, then I can make a more advanced video after this one. But yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So just like in the previous three videos, I've separated them out into folders. And for today's video, I've got an interfaces folder. We've got the scene we're working in. And then we've got some scripts. Some of them are the same from last time. I'll obviously be going through each of them and explaining what they do. And then I've made a prefabs folder for this projectile that falls on the player. I'll be explaining that when we get there. So the first script to explain is the events example. If you've watched the previous video uploaded before this one, then this code is from that. I've not changed it at all. All it does is it subscribes to an event for when the player's health changes and when the player's health changes, it updates the UI. If you don't know about events, then I definitely recommend watching the previous video because that's what it was all about. So as I said before, I've explained interfaces before on the channel plenty of times, but this is more of a beginner approach to it. So an interface, a lot of people explain it as a contract, okay? When you have a class, you write methods, okay? You have different functions that do different things. And certain classes need to do a similar job to another class. For example, in your game, you might have different things that can take damage in different ways. So they all need to take damage, but then the logic to actually take damage might be different. Now you as a damage dealer don't care how the things you hit actually handle taking damage. You just care that they can do it and you know you let them handle that themselves. So you might have different classes that handle the different bits of logic for taking damage. But at the end of the day, you don't want to write code that says, when I hit the player, check if it's a player, if it is do damage in this way, uh, if it's an enemy do damage in this way, if it's this do damage in that way. You don't want all these ifs or these different you know ways of writing the logic for, well, if it's this, do it this way. The actual thing de dealing damage shouldn't care about that. It shouldn't know about that. It should just say, I want to deal damage. The benefit to that is that when in the future you decide to write more things that can take damage in different ways, you just use an interface. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then it means you don't have to uh, revisit your damage dealing script and change anything there. Once that's written, it's done. So as I said, the interface is a contract. So here we have an interface. It's a public interface. This is kind of like if you're defining a class, you just change this word and the bit after the I is what the interface is about. And the I is just kind of standard, you know, naming convention for interfaces. You stick an I before it so people can see it's an interface. So I damageable means that whatever class implements this interface is damageable. That's the way to think about it. And what I'm saying in my contract is that anything that is damageable has to have a function, okay? Now, the reason we don't write public void here is because you can't specify whether it's public or private or whatever, because at the end of the day, this is always going to be public, okay? By by the fact that it's an interface and you're telling someone it has this method, it, it has to be public. You can't say private here, okay? If we try saying private here, we'll get some problems saying that uh, you can't use access modifiers or something. Uh, yeah, it must declare a body. So right here, it's actually trying to treat it like a function. Uh, it's having problems, it's an interface. So void is just saying this method that you have doesn't return anything to me, okay? Whoever's dealing damage doesn't want anything back. The method's called deal damage, and it takes in a float called damage value, though in the actual class implementation, you can change the name of this variable. It basically just has to have a float as a parameter. So you're just saying, doesn't return anything, it's called deal damage, and it takes in a float, okay? As long as the class does that, then you're okay, right, to deal damage to it. And then it's up to the class to have the logic for how it handles it. Let's go and show you how it's actually used. So I've got some code from last time. Ignore this. I'll be explaining the interface in a second. It's the same from last video. We've got some health, an event that gets raised when the health changes to update the UI. So that's basically it. And we have two methods over here to add and remove health. So for this health behavior, this is how we deal damage, right? We add health, or if we're taking damage, we remove health. This is what I want to call. Now I could call this take damage, but I'm going to keep it as remove. And I want to have this method to deal damage, okay? It's a public. It has to be for, a, for an interface method void because it returns nothing if you remember from the interface called deal damage takes in a float i've called it damage value and all it does is when it's called it calls the method in here remove okay remove the damage value so the amount of damage i'm being told to take i remove it from my health that's the kind of standard implementation now if you had no other ways in your game of taking damage if that was the only way it is for every single character and everything then you wouldn't need an interface that's not when you'd use an interface now by having this interface here, this is how you do an interface. So it has to come after the class you're inheriting, if you're inheriting a class, and then it has to be with a comma. And you can actually have multiple interfaces. If your thing is also healable, then you do I healable if you've had that as an interface, right? You can have as many interfaces as you want. 
And for every interface, you just have to make sure that you implement its methods like deal damage. If I took out deal damage, remember, it would be unhappy because it would say this does not implement uh, deal damage with a float. I can actually go onto this and press implement interface or the shortcut is a uh, control dot, control period. And if you press enter, it actually puts the method in for you. You just have to then change the logic, but I've already got it. So I'm gonna clear that and I'm gonna clear this. Okay, cool, but that's just the normal way. You don't need an interface because um, you know why, why do you need one? If there's just one use, you just manually call remove. Well, in the case that you have different ways to take damage, so like this, I remove it from my health. What if we have a different thing that can take damage, like in a game of Zelda, you have the, the pots and you hit them once and they die. Rather than bothering with a health system and updating health UI, you know, if it's so simple that it's just a fragile object, why not make a fragile script? Okay, I've made a fragile mono behavior. It implements I take damage, or I damageable, sorry. And it has the method to deal damage, takes in a float damage value. And what does it do? Well, the logic is just to destroy itself. Okay, so in this example, we take damage, we calculate the health. If we're at zero, then we die, all this other stuff. In this case, when we take damage, we don't even care about the damage value. We just want to destroy this game object. So by sticking this mono behavior on something, it handles destroying itself. And then finally, I have a script to stick on a projectile that handles dealing damage on contact. So it has the amount of damage I want to deal and then on trigger enter. So that gets called when the trigger collider enters something else. Um, it basically says, if the other thing that I'm colliding with does not have the damageable component, the I damageable component, then return. But if it does, then use it and call deal damage. So I'm using an interface here. Now I could use a class. I could say get fragile uh, and fragile has deal damage. So it would work. The problem is if I said get fragile, but it doesn't have fragile, it might have health behavior, then it won't work. And if I do it the other way around, I might say health behavior and then, you know, it wouldn't work on fragile things. But because they're both damageable, I can just say I damageable. So it means try and get me a component that implements I damageable is what it's saying. So if it has fragile or if it has health behavior, it gets that. If it doesn't have it, it returns. But if it does have it, we call deal damage. Now, this class doesn't know what it's dealing damage to, just something that takes damage. If I press F12, it takes me to the interface because it could be anything that does it. You know, it could be whatever I want. I could now go and make a new class that does damage in a completely different way. Now, imagine that I hadn't used an interface. Well, this would have to say uh, like fragile, for example. Okay. And then this would have to be copied and pasted. And this would have to say health behavior. Okay. And then I would have to say um, like this would be health, for example. I'd have to say uh, health dot deal damage damage amount. Uh, sorry, damage amount. And then here I'd have to say fragile. Uh, oops, fragile. Nope, I have to call this fragile. Okay, fragile dot deal damage, damage amount. And then this would be an, instead of a not, it would be this. So this would be our logic. We'd say uh, if we get fragile off it, deal damage to the fragile. If we get health behavior, deal damage to health. So this does the same thing as having the interface. Obviously, it's a lot more code like this, and it's, you know, it, it, you've got to cast it to this, if not cast it to this, if not cast it to that. If you just have the one thing you're looking for, you either get it or you don't, and then you're done. It's a lot faster, and it's just cleaner code. And imagine now I have a third type, I'd then have to go and copy paste this, and I'd have to put in that type here, and that's just bad code, okay? It's so much nicer to be able to undo and go back to what I had, where we had the I damageable, like so, and we just deal damage to it. I'll quickly show how the scene was set up. So we have the player from last time with a health behavior on, okay? Keep in mind, it's the new health behavior. I've got like two versions now. I dragged this one in from the interfaces scripts folder and it has a capsule collider now so it can be hit. Then I have another player with the fragile script instead. Uh, also on the UI, remember because it's a different uh, thing, I've added the different events example and plugged everything in, okay? Then I've made a projectile prefab, which is simply just a sphere, okay? And it has a collider on it and a rigid body so it falls, and then the deal damage on contact script. So when I press play, you'll notice how like in the intro, uh, this fragile one dies instantly from getting hit, the other one takes 10 damage and updates the UI. That was quite a short video on interfaces. I can do some more advanced, longer videos if you'd like, let me know down below. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Jean Ran, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. 
If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.